we're going to be talking about Ilaria Baldwin, also known as Hillary Hayward Thomas. She is married to actor superstar Alec Baldwin, and they have a family together. But there's something off when it comes to Hilaria, because she's not who she claims to be. This Boston-born white girl has tried appropriating Spanish culture through her career, and even though she was successful at it, her success fell short, and she was exposed. We're going to take a deep dive into Hilaria's life and her lies, so let's get into it. Do you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep at night? Well, there's a way you can drastically improve your sleep. Manta Sleep has designed a revolutionary eye mask to help you get better sleep. I recently took a trip to California and the Manta Sleep Mask was a game changer. It's so comfortable, I slept through the entire flight. You can adjust the comfy head strap to your liking and rearrange the soft eye cups to fit your face. I love the cups because they 100% block out light and they add no pressure on your eyes. Your sleep is so important for your mood and your well-being, so treat yourself or a loved one to a Manta sleep mask. I've been wearing eye masks my entire life, and this one is truly the best investment. So follow my link in the description below and use my code SLOAN for 10% off your order. Thank you Manta sleep for sponsoring this video and enjoy. So you guys may recognize Alaria Baldwin from this viral clip where she forgets the English word for a cucumber. We have very few ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have, um, how do you say it? Cucumber? Cucumbers. We have, um, red... You guys are probably wondering, why are we watching this woman forget the English word for cucumber? Well, during this cooking segment, she does talk a little bit about Spain and how olive oil is a key ingredient there. Listen closely and pay attention to her accent. So then you're going to put olive oil in and you can use, you know, I mean, when I was growing up, I think we used probably about like half a cup or something like that. Some people like a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But I just kind of eyeball it. We're going to put... You know, well, I think, I think it's a Spaniard thing because olive oil is in every it's single in every dish. dish. <laughs> no, if you, don't, if you don't like olive oil, like just you, you can't go to Spain. If any of you guys are Spanish or from Spain, you're probably like, wait, what the hell is that accent? Because something doesn't add up. And there are so many clips of Alaria on the internet where she has an accent and then she doesn't have an accent. Listen to her speak while she tells this joke because her accent is completely gone. There are advantages to being married to a man Alex's age. For one thing, he is a wonderful grandfather to our children. There are advantages to being married to a man Alex's age. For one thing, he is a wonderful grandfather to our children. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't hear any accent in that clip, which is bizarre because Alaria has made it very clear that she has grown up and she is from Spain. For example, in November 2013, Alaria posted a sunset on her Instagram and captioned it, this is the sunset I remember when I was young in Spain. She also included a caption in Spanish as well. In 2014, Alaria posted a photo of herself doing a yoga pose with the Spanish flag on her chest. The reason why she posted this photo was to celebrate being back in her home country of Spain. And of course, she's posted a bunch of Instagram pictures where she's captioned them in Spanish, which honestly would make sense for a woman woman who's from Spain. But who is Alaria Baldwin and where did she come from? Literally, where did she come from? And why is this such a big question? Well, Alaria Baldwin is an American yoga instructor, a podcaster, and an author. If you were to go to her Wikipedia page two years ago, you would see that she was born in Spain. But since being exposed, Wikipedia has gone back and updated her page to correctly list that Hilaria is actually from Boston, which is not in Spain. Boston is located in the northeast of America, which again, not in Spain. So how do you confuse the two or how do you even mess that up? That seems like a really big error. But in actuality, it appears that all of this has been done by design. It could be that she wants to appear exotic. The truth of being born in the U.S. just isn't good enough. 
it isn't interesting enough for her. She wanted to obtain another identity. Spanish culture seemed to be convenient because she traveled to Spain a few times and because her family lived over there. She felt entitled to take that culture as her own. I do want to clarify that Ilaria's parents actually moved to Spain when she was 27 years old. So it's not like she was a kid growing up and her parents were located in Spain. They moved after she was a grown adult. She was out of the home and they went there to go and retire. But let's talk a little bit more about why Ilaria Baldwin is famous, because as I mentioned earlier, she's married to Alec Baldwin. So the couple met back in August 2011 at a restaurant. At this point in Ilaria, life, she was on social media quite often, in particular Twitter, and she was tweeting out a bunch of different things all in Spanish. One of her followers actually asked her, why do you tweet in Spanish? And she responded, because I spent a lot of my childhood in Spain. My family lives there. And again, this was back in August 2011, the same month that she started dating Alec. And it looks like Ilaria refers to Spain as her home because that's where her parents Parents live. Home is where my parents are going to be. If my parents move to China, I'm going to go to China and say I'm going home, which this is an interesting way to look at it because I was born and raised in Virginia. So Virginia is always going to be my home. And no matter where my parents go or go off to retire, that's not going to be my new home. At least where I live, there are so many people who go and retire to Florida. And I don't hear people around here saying that their new home is Florida just because their parents moved there. But I guess that's how Ilaria thinks, because when her parents moved to Spain at the age of 27, that became her, I guess, her new home. Like the most 2020 story we didn't need. But it's this like this culture we live in now where like otherwise completely unremarkable people can go to a study abroad, come home, decide it's not cool to be American, fake being Spanish and then live the con. Okay, so obviously Ilaria didn't go on a study abroad and just adopt that culture, but I think the analogy there is perfect for this situation because, again, she was 27 years old and her grown retired parents went off to Spain and then she conveniently adopted the Spanish culture. But what's interesting about her relationship with Alec is that they got married very quickly. By June 2012, so after less than a year of dating, the couple decided to get married. The couple actually had their nuptials announced in the Times, and they claim that she graduated from New York University, but she was raised in Boston and Spain, and that her parents now live in Spain. The Times reported her full name as Elaria Lynn Thomas. She actually shared with People magazine that she wore a Spanish veil during their ceremony because she liked that it brought in a bit of her culture. So the couple got married, and they seem really happy. She was actually doing a bunch of press, and at one point she shared that she actually invited 30 or 40 family members from Spain to attend her wedding. Because it was my wedding, but it was the best party ever, oh, ever, ever, on. ever. I had like 35 or 40 of my family members come from Spain, which equals really good party, <laughs> really good party. She said, I had 35 or 40 family members come from Spain, which equals really good party, equals a good party. That part was so cringe. And she ended off the interview by saying that she hoped to go on a honeymoon with her new husband, Alec, to her home country, España, so they can go and see her family. Alaria actually ended up addressing that comment in particular about the family members who came from Spain, and she tried to make it about something else talking about how our country is diverse and it's a bunch of BS. The name, oh, something about our wedding that like, you know, I have all these people from Spain come over for my wedding. We did. We had 44 people come over, my family and my friends come over and, and it was like magical. And ultimately this like, come, this boils down to this idea where, um, this is a country of a lot of different cultures. And I think that we can be different parts of ourselves with different people. So she's saying that there's a bunch of different cultures in this country and people should be able to 
I guess, pull out different parts of themselves around different people. It all seems so backwards. And actually, in November of 2012, people started questioning Alaria and her culture because some things don't add up. So what does Alaria decide to do? Well, she ends up posting a photo of herself wearing a Spanish soccer jersey. She wrote in the caption, in case there was any question about my cultural upbringing, I guess here's a picture of me in the Spanish jersey, which she wrote mi, mi cultura, mi cultura, I can't even say that. But anyways, she included a hashtag and she wrote hashtag if there were a middle finger emoji would be inserted here, which there is a middle finger emoji now, but back in the day there wasn't. So actually one of Alaria's friends commented on that photo and wrote, I think I'm responsible for taking that photo. Keep in mind, this person has their hometown listed as Los Angeles. So you could only assume that maybe this photo was taken in LA or at least in America. And actually, Alaria commented back to that comment from their friend and wrote, it was a good moment. But of course, she wrote, un bueno momento, which I would assume means a good moment. <sighs> trying to reaffirm that she is Spanish. When it comes to Alec Baldwin, he's only made this situation worse. Let's go back to 2013 when he was on The Late Show with David Letterman. During this interview, he talks about his wife and how she's from Spain and she has a strong accent. Take a look. Face fact, if you're a <laughs> husband and you want to be a good husband, and I'm trying to be a good husband and, and, and for future father, you save your best for your wife and she knows that. So for example, my wife wife's on the phone with her hairdresser or her friend. She's like, really? Okay, I can't wait to see you. That's going to be great. Fantastic. What time? 12 o'clock? My wife is from Spain. Mm -hmm. And she said, and she blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. I don't mean to be racist when I put that accent on there, by the way. <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And my wife is saying, yes, I can. I wait to see you. 12 o'clock will be fine to me. I can't wait to see you, too. Hangs on the phone, turns to me and goes, I don't feel good. <laughs> And I'm like, she saves her most yeah. vulnerable, needy self for you. Because so Alec Baldwin clearly said that his wife is from Spain, which isn't true. My wife is from Spain. Mm -hmm. I found this one comment under that interview and they wrote, he's really going for the accent and the my wife's from Spain thing. So much so that I'm beginning to wonder if Alec has been taken for a ride all these years like the rest of us, which I do question if maybe Alec was fooled by Alaria that she is in fact Spanish. I mean, they do have a Spanish phrase printed on their wedding ring, so it seems like they're both pretty invested. And throughout the years, Alaria has continued to push this narrative that she's from Spain. In April 2013, she actually tweeted out that her family lives in Spain and she speaks Spanish. One month earlier, she posted a throwback picture of herself performing a Latin dance. At this point, Alaria was pregnant with their first daughter and she wrote on her Instagram caption that the baby in her tummy was doing exactly what she was doing in that photo, just trying to, I guess, insinuate that her daughter was doing like some Latin dance in her tummy, pushing this narrative that she's Spanish and her daughter's going to be Spanish as well. Later on that year, she ended up doing an interview with mom.com and she talks about bringing the Spanish culture to her daughter and how she was going to raise her daughter to be bilingual, which honestly, I am so here for this, like, you know, raising your kids to be bilingual or, um, you know, allowing them to appreciate their culture. But that's when it's their culture. This isn't Alaria's culture. But of course, she continued to embrace it. And in June 2013, she was listed as one of the top 15 best dressed Latina stars of the week. So actually, Latina magazine decided to list Alaria on their best dressed list twice in a row for both June and July. And one Twitter user joked and said that, you know, Alaria should probably get a permanent spot on the list. And she replied to that tweet and wrote, haha, I'll take it. At no point did Alaria correct the magazine, which identified her as a Latina star. Again, this woman isn't Latina. I guess kudos to that. But to your point, it was like a fake money-making exercise. 
and we all fell for it. This truly was a money making exercise and we all fell for it. I mean, everything that she was doing was Latina related. All of the interviews and the magazines and everyone believed that Alaria was some Latina star. But everything starts to fall in March of 2014 because Alaria did an interview with Vanity Fair, of course, the Spanish version. And the article mentions that Alaria didn't want to provide or confirm her biographical details. Alaria shared during this interview that she was a competitive Latin dancer and she actually learned in Spain. So she learned from the best. Well, someone decided to go and look at competition records and they found that Alaria was actually competing in the Northeast region. Her rankings are listed from 2012 to 2005 in cities including Cambridge, Massachusetts and Blackpool, England. So the timeline does doesn't add up and when she claims she was performing in Spain she was actually competing in the states and honestly 2014 wasn't a good year for Alaria because people started exposing her in October of that year Alaria's parents David and Catherine created a website called International Integrators and on this website they shared personal stories about their approaches to wellness as you guys know Alaria is a yoga instructor and there are actually some really bizarre pictures of her doing some weird poses. I have to share because I forgot to mention those earlier. So it seems like her whole family really cares about wellness and being healthy. So Alaria's mother, Catherine, shares in her first blog post that she worked at the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School from 1992 until 2012. So it doesn't look like she was in Spain during that time. We also learned that her parents, David and Catherine, moved to Spain in 2011. Again, in 2011, Alaria would have been 27 years old, so it wasn't like she was a kid and her parents up and left her to go to Spain and she would go and spend her childhood there. They left once they were ready for retirement. And it actually looks like her parents like to write blog posts, which isn't great for Alaria because she can't keep up with her own lies. And her father even claims in a blog post that he has zero Latin blood in him. Zero. None. He wrote that he grew up in a Midwestern family who relocated to the East Coast. He does share that his life was heavily influenced by Spanish language and culture, but again, he has zero Latin blood in his veins. When Alaria's father was a young boy, his father, so Alaria's grandfather, would travel to Argentina for business, and he actually told David that if he were to ever learn Spanish, he could come with him one day. So David ended up learning Spanish Spanish and about the culture, and he ended up going to a few different countries in South America. As an adult, he went to Spain for the first time, and he found a deeper connection with the country and its food. So he didn't even go to Spain until he was an adult. Hilaria, you're from, you're actually half Spanish and half American, and you are a, a wellness expert. In fact, her parents can trace their roots back all the way to the days before the American Revolution. It's all bull, screams the New York Post front page with a cheeky illustration of Ilaria as a Spanish matador. I don't know what kind of relationship Alaria has with her parents, but I would have been like, uh, hold up, can you guys please stop writing these blog posts because it's biting me in the ass. And in September 2020, Alaria was really exposed because a huge forum thread came together which put together a bunch of her lies, including the fact that her accent is fake. The thread was on a website called DC Urban Moms, but the thread is gone, I'm assuming that Alaria took legal action because a lot of the evidence that these articles like refer to has been removed from the internet, which tells me that these people were threatened with a lawsuit. But one person brought up this point in the thread and wrote, it sounds like her mother had a thriving career in Boston for many years. How could her daughter have been raised in Spain? Even if she did vacation there, there's no reason she would have picked up an accent like that. One person from her high school wrote, I know Hillary Hayward Thomas from the Cambridge School of Weston in Massachusetts. She didn't have an accent then and didn't change 
changed her name to Elaria, which I'm sorry guys if I mispronounced that name like 50 times in this video, it's kind of hard to say, but they go on to claim that she's not Spanish. So please stop using an accent in this podcast. Oh my gosh, this is for her podcast in her podcast and interrupting your guests. That is such a savage review. That is so funny. And this accent that she uses sometimes is really bad. Dean reported Ilaria, who was born in Spain, has made certain to raise her children with her native language, Spanish. But newly unearthed photos show Ilaria as a high school student at the swanky Cambridge School in Weston, Massachusetts. And this tweeted yearbook page identifies Ilaria by her birth name, Hillary Hayward Thomas, at a high school performance. I knew her as Hillary Hayward Thomas, and she didn't have a Spanish accent, goes another tweet. So like that classmate shared, Alaria didn't go to high school in Spain or spend her childhood in Spain like she claims. She went to a very nice high school in Massachusetts. I believe it's actually private, so they had to go and pay for it. A media outlet named Boston.com reported that years before she became Alaria Baldwin, she was known as Hillary Hayward Thomas, and she was going to a private high school, a very nice high school, and she never moved to New York City from Spain for college like she previously claimed. So there was actually a podcast that Hilaria did where she claims that she left Spain to come to New York City for college, which isn't the truth because she went to high school in Boston and then went to school in New York afterwards. If you guys want to pause the screen and read some of the lies that she said, please do so but I just can't even wrap my mind around this. There is one former high school teacher who has spoken out against Alaria. They claim that her name was Hillary back in the day and that she had zero Spanish accent. She was actually a good kid and kind of quiet, and she was a gifted dancer, phenomenal dancer, but not a Spanish girl like she's claiming she was and not speaking with a Spanish accent. As I was doing research for this video, Video, I started to question, okay, she's got to have some Spanish connection, right? I mean, she can't just like make this up out of nowhere. Okay, maybe her mother, ha you know, we talked about her father, David, some. What about her mother? Maybe her mother has some Spanish connection. Well, I found a great article that walks through who exactly are Alaria Baldwin's parents. So I guess at one point, people thought that maybe Catherine Hayward, who is Alaria's mother, could have some Spanish in her, and that possibly her father, so Alaria's grandfather, Chuck, could be Spanish. But it turns out he isn't, and he's from Massachusetts. The same goes for his wife, Irene. So again, Alaria's grandmother, who would be Catherine's mother, she was also born and raised in Massachusetts. And of course, Catherine, Alaria's mother was also raised in Massachusetts, where she became an internist for the General Hospital, and then she became an assistant professor at Harvard Medicine. She and Alaria's father, David, welcomed their daughter, Hillary, birth name Hillary, because that's the name they gave her, in January 1984 in Boston, even though Alaria has claimed that she was born in Spain. Throughout the early 2000s, both of Alaria's parents were super busy with their careers. They've actually done a lot, and they are super successful people, but as you guys can see, nothing's involving Spain here. It's all located in Massachusetts. It actually turns out her father, David Thomas, was an active volunteer in the community, and in one of his like descriptions, he wrote that he's been living in Boston for 37 years years, so it doesn't sound like there's anything going on with Spain here. But of course, after decades of living in Boston with his wife Catherine, they decided to go and retire in Spain in 2011 when Alaria was 27 years old, thus making her on again, off again, Spanish accent even more bizarre. So after this all started coming out about Alaria and her family, she had to respond because everyone's looking at her like, who the hell are you? Well, Alaria claims that she never tried to hide her identity. She also said, where's the smoking gun? My intentions are I'm living my life and my life is created by my parents, my different experiences, my languages, 
is my culture. Again, what culture? So Alaria ended up posting a video on Instagram explaining herself, but honestly, I feel like she didn't really explain anything. I mean, she claims that her accent is, I guess, influenced by other people who she's around. But again, I feel like I didn't get any truth from this video. Um, so there's been some questions about where I'm born. I'm born in Boston. And then I spent some of my childhood in Boston, some of my childhood in Spain. My family, my brother, my parents, my nephew, everybody is over there in Spain. Now I'm here. And so there was like a lot of back and forth my entire life. And I'm really lucky that I grew up speaking two languages. And I'm trying to raise my kids so that they speak two languages too. Um, and that's something that's very important for me, especially having my family abroad. Um, so that was one thing. I think people ask sometimes about how I speak. I am that person that if I've been speaking a lot of Spanish, I, you know, tend to mix them. And if I'm speaking more English, I, you know, doing a lot of English, then I mix that. It's one of those things that's always been a little bit, I've been a little insecure about over different times. And, you know, when I try to work, I try to enunciate a little bit more. But if I get nervous or upset or something, then I start to, to mix the two. And again, that's just something that, I've always been a little bit insecure about, but I've decided maybe 2021, we will get over that. And I'm definitely addressing it very openly right now with that insecurity. Honestly, I don't know what to take away from that clip because I can understand why she would be insecure over her accent because everyone's calling it fake. When you've got Spanish people telling you that your accent is fake, obviously that's going to make you insecure. And it just makes me think about all of the press that she did because she was totally fine with them publishing that she's born in Spain and that her native language is Spanish. But again, none of that's true. Two years after this article came out, the publisher decided to issue a correction because Alaria isn't from Spain and they published that she was from there. So they went back and updated it and wrote that she's actually from Boston. In one of Alaria's apologies, she claims that the media is the one to blame because when she's doing interviews with them, it's like a game of telephone. You tell them one thing and then they publish another, which kind of seems like BS to me because every time she does do any press, she implies that she's Spanish and from Spain. Hey guys, I, this morning I posted um, what I posted because it seems to be there's some confusion and some questioning about my about my background. This for a living and taking all these all the interviews and stuff like that I do is a little bit like playing a game of telephone. Where like you say something and they report something else, exactly what's happening right now. They literally call and say, these are the things that we're going to say about you. And you just get to a point where you're like, well, what can I do to stop you? If you're going to go out there and say these things, then there's not a lot that I can do. I'm sure we all have different opinions about the media and how they do their reporting. I personally have spoken to a few handfuls of reporters and honestly, in all of my experiences, they're usually recording it or they're taking very detailed notes. So it's really not like a game of telephone. So I don't I don't think they would like hear you say like, oh, I'm, I was born in Boston, but grew up in Spain and they would go and like publish that you were born in Spain because that's just not how the media works. And a lot of people are really frustrated with Alaria over this and for good reason. Here's a throwback clip of Meghan McCain on The View and she summarizes it beautifully. Part of the frustration is that white people are taking responsibility, taking credit for work and things and being given opportunities that minorities are not. Hilaria Baldwin was on the cover of Latina magazine pretending or at least not saying that she wasn't Latina and getting a, a cover of a magazine that a Latina woman should have gotten. Megan McCain is an interesting person, but today's video isn't about her. And I have to agree with what she's saying because truly, Alaria is taking the spot of another true Spanish woman to be featured on these magazines or doing these interviews. And she's just appropriating everything. Here's another clip from that same segment with The View. And Sunny actually has a really great point as well. Um, she was very flippant in her explanation and, and says, you know, why is this a big deal? Well, I, I I think it's a big deal because this is about the uh, fetishizing Hispanic women and Latina women. Um, it's not just uh, the fake accent, which I, in and of itself I think is terrible. Um, she faked an entire identity. Um, she uh, intentionally uh, culturally appropriated the Spanish culture and used the culture for branding. 
uh, f to, to make herself be uh, more uh, exotic um, and successful. I agree with what Sunny had to say there because I do believe that Alaria saw this as an opportunity to be more interesting, to be exotic, and she took it on because who else does this? From the information available, it seems as though Alaria Baldwin was careful not to explicitly say, like in an interview, that she was born in Spain, but she did imply it and it appeared in other places. Her use of a Spanish accent and other behavior point to a person who really wanted people to believe that she was from Spain. Honestly, I feel bad for Alaria because it just doesn't seem like she's happy with herself. And I don't know if there's like a mental condition for this. I tried to do some research to see if you have anything, please email me. But I was thinking like, is there a condition for people who appropriate other cultures, like some type of mental illness? You guys may recognize this woman, Rachel, who was a professor at a university teaching African studies, I believe. And she's literally a white woman living as a black woman. She just decided decided to take on the culture and that's not okay and it looks like Alaria is the Spanish version of Rachel. Part of me does question whether Alec knows about this and whether he's okay with it or was he fooled? I mean I feel like if I was him I would like resent Alaria after learning about this because who are you? If you're not this Spanish like woman that you're presenting yourself to be then who are you? are you? So there's actually a rumor out there that Alec Baldwin was rejected by a Mexican actress named Salma Hayek. Some believe that Alaria actually based herself off of this woman and decided to create this Spanish, Hispanic persona to attract Alec, get him trapped in a relationship, have kids with him, and there you go. She's rich and successful. I have no idea if that rumor is true, but it would be interesting if she knew this and she tried to like approach him as a Spanish woman, knowing that he was rejected by a Hispanic woman. It sounds so childish in high school to me. I can't even imagine, but I also can't imagine like appropriating a culture. So who really knows? Nowadays, it looks like Alec and Alaria have bigger problems because as you guys know, Alec Baldwin accidentally killed someone on set. He shot a prop gun and injured two people, killing one of them. So they've got bigger problems to deal with and honestly this is kind of like old news but not really because she's still living as a Spanish woman. I also came across a sponsored post on her page which I found really cringe because it's just as bad as family channels. They're using their children to exploit them for sponsorships and to gain money so I don't know. Alaria has rubbed me the wrong way a few different times and this is the cherry on top. But really, who does she think she is? And what do you guys think about this situation? Because it was so, so hard to research it. There are so many great resources and I will link them below, including a Reddit thread. So stay up to date because Alaria isn't stopping anytime soon. And honestly, I'm so glad to be done with this video. I'm so tired of saying Alaria because my brain's like, Hilaria, Hillary, who knows? Here's my email. If you have any other video ideas for me, you guys gave me the idea for this video. So give me another one and I'll make some more comments. Content. But let's go ahead and open this PO Box package item. Ooh, it looks like it's from um, Keezy. Keezy. And it looks like you're from like the kind of the West Coast, but not exactly. Let's see what's going on here. Ooh, I actually have to go and turn in my keys today because it's the last day for my old PO Box address, which all of my videos are updated with my new address. Ouch, why is this not opening? Okay, so we've got a card right here with my name on it. So it says Athena's Scrubs. Dear Sloan, I love your YouTube channel. I sent you a bag and some other accessories from my Etsy shop, Athena's Scrubs. We make and sell scrub uniforms and tops and other items. Aw, keep up the great journalism work, Sloan. Love, Keezy. Aw, oh, thank you, Keezy, and I'll list everything below. That's so sweet, and I'm guessing, like, scrubs kind of, like, like doctors and stuff. At first I was thinking like rubbing scrubs, but look at this bag. It's so cute. Wow. That's so nice. I love bags like these. They're perfect for the beach. Perfect for so many things. Grocery shopping. I love it. And this is a nice one. You guys saw me. I was like, oh, it's a nice one. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And definitely go check their Etsy below. Everything's going to be listed. And then it looks like they sent me a branded pin right here, which is really nice. I could always use some pins. And then we've got this. Oh, look at this. this. I guess it's like a name badge that has like like 
what's it called like bejeweled on it oh my gosh this is so cool i love this and i love how it's black with a little bit of purple these are so cool and i'm so impressed with your brand and honestly i haven't seen any like scrubs like lines ever on my channel so congrats on that it's so meaningful especially because like the people who wear these scrubs and these things like they have such a hard job and just giving them options is so nice you know because i feel i always like wondered like where do they get their scrubs but they can go and you know get some custom ones or whatever from athena's so thank you so much go and check out their shop below and i'll see you guys in a new video soon bye guys